you, Dr. Dipendra. Very good evening. And uh, today, as has been told to you by Dr. Dipendra, this is uh, the surgical part of the wrist case, which we discussed a few weeks ago. I think this was about two weeks ago that we discussed a case of radiocarpal arthritis. And uh, today we would be talking about the surgical management, which involved the operation of radial styloidectomy. Now this operation, uh, I would like to impress upon you is not a very common operation. And I have tried to sort of simplify the whole technique for you, showing you the relevant pictures and video presentations in PowerPoint format and based on the anatomical considerations of the operation. So just to recapitulate, our patient was a 45 year, 44 year old man who presented to us with pain in the left non-dominant wrist, which had been gradually progressing over the last three years. But since the last three months or so, this pain was now becoming more and more troublesome for this patient. The patient is a factory worker. And with the left hand, he has to hold a sort of a significant weight of, a, of an iron bar. And with the right hand, he uses at times the hammer to create a shape or to bend the iron bar. Now, three years ago, the pain was, at least the patient attributes it to an injury an episode of injury. And ever since the patient claims that he has been having pain, which is gradually increasing in magnitude. This was the clinical picture. The left is the left side is the involved side. And you can see that on the dorsoradial aspect, there was a swelling. We have already discussed this case. And along with that, we also found that this particular area, the snuff box area was exquisitely tender. When we applied some pressure in the snuff box area, it was extremely tender. Uh, along with this, the movements, the wrist extension, as well as the wrist flexion were found to be restricted in comparison to the normal side. The extension of the wrist was not significantly restricted. However, it was the palmar flexion which was found to be more restricted than the extension. And both in extremes were found to be painful. The x-ray of the same patient, the wrist, left wrist, showed what we uh, had discussed the other day, that if you look at the wrist x-ray and if you look at this particular area, this particular area, you can imagine or you can for yourself conclude that there is a radiocarpal arthritis which is being shown by some sort of a osteophyte. The osteophyte, this arrow is pointing towards the osteophyte. You can see for yourself and this was creating a sort of an impingement on the scaphoid. And this, we felt, was the cause of the pain. So radiocarpal arthritis, the cause was, if you look at the, if you look at the, uh, I'll just erase this. So if you look at the, gap between the scaphoid and the lunate, you will, feel, you will see that the gap is increased. And this we told you is what is known as the Terry Thomas sign. You can read about it or you can revisit uh, the discussion which we had 
the other day for all those people who were not present that day. So it was a scapho lunate traumatic dislocation, three years old, which was now presenting as a radiocarpal arthritis. So we discussed the diagnosis as uh, post-traumatic wrist arthritis, and we also considered the treatment options in such cases to be a radial styloidectomy, or if the arthritis is more extensive, one can go and do a four-bone fusion between the capitate, lunate, hamate, and triquetrum. And sometimes the scaphoid can be excised when we are doing a four bone fusion of this sort. The last option, which is also available in such cases, is the proximal row carpectomy. For all those patients who want that the movement of the wrist is more important for them, a proximal row carpectomy can also be performed. Well, we decided that this patient probably is more apt for a radial styloidectomy operation. Now, this operation is usually performed through the anatomical snuff box because you can, for yourself, notice that the radial styloid is deeply seated in the snuff box. It is easily approached from there. Obviously, it is a subperiosteal excision of the radial styloid, but the most important thing which, we'll, which we will be repeating and reinforcing again and again is that it is important to preserve the volar radial ligaments. Which ligaments will soon come to that? So the operation can be performed or was performed in this particular patient under regional anesthesia. So a brachial block was performed by the anesthetist. We used a pneumatic tourniquet after exsanguination, exsanguination of the limb using an S-mark bandage, an autoclaved S-mark bandage, which I have been emphasizing upon in all hand surgery cases. And loop magnification is helpful, or it is, I think, an important piece of equipment because we need to see better in these cases and one of the structures which needs to be preserved here is the sensitive.